Welcome, welcome to Trust Stories. I'm Lenny Fontana coming out of New York City. A couple of things. We're in the middle of the winter. And when they say brick cold, man, it's brick cold. 22 degrees Fahrenheit, minus five on the Celsius side. Whoa. But the wonderful part about winter is it tucks us back into our homes. And this is the time when we watch all these wonderful programs and catch up on things because normally we're out and about when it's getting warm out. Dancing, partying in the streets. And this is why I'm going to go this direction to a movement that happened. Coming out of the 80s into the 90s, a movement that became strong, a movement that couldn't be played with, a movement that was helped and created by this man that I'm about ready to bring up. And when we call him a godfather of a sound, we must use it eloquently. And when I say it, I mean it. Godfather of UKG. What in the hell is UKG? UK Garage. A sound that was born off of the American sound coming from the shores of New York City, New Jersey, Chicago, but then taken and made its life and home in England. This wonderful man, activist, he is smart as a tack. Don't kid yourself. He's always on the pulse, He's looking for the next thing. But we have to talk about part of his past too, because without the past, we wouldn't have the present and what the future is going to be. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome to the show my brother man who I have broke bread with at a table in his family's house, have ultimate respect for as an artist, a DJ, producer, remixer, promoter, you name it. You know, when you talk about changing hats all day long, this man does it. For you, up to this stage, Norris, the boss, Windross. Too much. A little bit too much. I mean, a little bit too much. <laughs> but hey. You earned it. Yeah. You got, the well, stripes, you got the stripes on your shirt to prove it, bro. And the years of experience to, to, yeah. to go off of. I know you don't want to hear it. I know you're very modest. And that's another thing I should have mentioned. It's also too modest and that's dangerous for all of us because he's he's lethal with so many ideas mm. and so much chutzpah in him that he's he still has a lot more to say he's not through yet now i'm done norris how are you <laughs> yeah thank you thank you interesting interesting listening to someone such as yourself thank you and with the with the with the stripes you have um introducing me um so thank you thank you and hello everyone brother yeah. man you know a lot of years have gone past and with the years comes wisdom yes you know um i talked about this with other people and other shows about themes and sounds but there's not many people that i could say are a primary source to a sound or in the beginning there yeah. was genesis you know what i'm saying we got to talk about like that genesis part and you are part of that genesis you're the beginning the alpha to the beta you know it is what this is can't take that away from you they can they can rewrite it the way they like to but the story always sets back to you so how before we even get into the story of the UKG, we want to hear the parts of you growing up and finding the music. So how does music find you as a young kid? <laughs> um, three letters or, or five letters or six letters, however you want to call it, it's got to be mum or mummy. Yeah, it's got to be that little um, that little Grammy in the corner of the of the living room that that we're not allowed in. <laughs> well, we are allowed in. We are allowed in on Sundays, actually, and we can go in there and um, 
put the seven inches and rack them up. My mum would would um, encourage me to rack up uh, five or six records and it would go around and they would drop. And Sundays were a very special thing in our household outside of Sunday school when that stops, But because none of us like that. But when we were back or when before we were going, that gramophone seemed to be the biggest sound system in the world to me. And my mum's love of music was very eclectic. Of course, we had the the um, the, the the reggae, the the um, the um, Trojan hits playing, and the Israelites and all that. But we also had Tom Jones. I remember my mum used to call everyone that she fancied her boyfriend and put my boyfriend's record. <laughs> 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 it's not unusual. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's and because of her joy in the music, I felt the same joy from the music. And um, that was the start of it. And as it happens, um, we we were in our house in, I mean, this was, I mean, from a very young age, we didn't have the gramophone. But when we got out of the, uh, the real bottom part and moved up to the council house part and um, had the, what I've described as a clack, castle lord oh it was just a, a two up two down and um we were in there and uh and and i felt we i felt that was it that that was all of us um uh but she's my mum and my dad split up when i was before i was five and we moved from north london uh, from south london to north london and um I, we she told us which she was opening the pub she was actually opening a club a nightclub it was called the cobweb club infamous in north london we had a lot of the big sound systems pass through um fat man was kind of like resident there but we had shaka in there we had loads of people come and hook their bo boxes up there as such as a nine stroke 10 year old 11 year old the i used to sit on laps play what's them they taught me to play dominoes and listen to them chatting the yard chat and having a love for the baseline i just remember developing this great love for the baseline although ultimately i became a soul boy because i love soul music so that was me that was me that was that that was it it's like well, there's no better education than being in mom's mom's club for, for i mean there's nothing better than that yeah well it's I mean, um so when it, you yeah, when you say about DJs and things that were coming through selectors, was it more of a reggae style club? It was a extreme reggae club. It was a sound system club. So, in no, she opened it and it was just reggae. I mean, real reggae, roots reggae, like Mike Men, they'd string their boxes up. Um, I think the club, looking at the thinking now, I thought, it was, I thought it was huge, but maybe 250 people could fit in that basement, very low ceilings, rock the place. We was upstairs in the bedrooms when they were doing it, but when they were stringing up, I was party to, as I say, to sitting on laps, watching them do their thing. Um, like I say, that's where I think listening to the sounds from upstairs in the night time and it would and literally back then the it, the club would be friday saturday nights would go through to four five six in the morning so um it was lawless really but how did, it, how did so when when mom was running the club how did who was the impaler upstairs keeping everyone in 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 line who was the you know parochial person i should say you know well, parent we looked up we 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 were we were trusted don't know why she'd done that but we were upstairs alone so so come 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 eight nine ten o'clock we were banished to the upper floors that's everything down to the ground floor it was a, like a three-story house on the high road it's quite quite a big house still there um walked my son past it the other day and told him to get back it again and um and we looked out for ourselves. We wasn't meant to be in bed, but we used to play games, we used to run down, we used to listen, we used to try not to get caught. We used to call it spiss spying, but we wanted to be as round the sound as much as possible. The three of us, Rosemary, my little sister, and Beverly, my older sister, and um got some great memories, great fun. 
outside of the rest of it. That this is, I see, I knew none of this part. This is incredible. That you yeah, got this, is new, this is news to most people. Immersed in nightclub life yeah. as a kid without even knowing you're immersed in nightclub life. Yeah. But, but let me touch on something. Mom and dad split up, okay? Yeah. Did she come from a nightclub background? Mom? No, she come from church background. So um, how does this go on to become a nightclub owner? Well, uh, she she met she met a guy that beca- that was in our lives for a few years, um, and I suppose it was their relationship that brought it because it was his idea. It was up uh, between them. I, 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 yeah, my thoughts on him ain't the greatest thoughts, but um, actually it was him that encouraged the move and. Um, my mum went along with it and she that she became a licensee and rest of his is history as we so so to speak. Yeah, so it's like you yeah. never know what karmically is gonna happen when other people yeah. come into your life. I mean, who would have yeah. thought? I can't ask you, hey, if you didn't go into this type of lifestyle and work, what would you be doing now? Because <laughs> it's kind of pre to you even being in a position to be like, well, I've never dealt with that as a kid. And then I found it later. You were already immersed in it as a child. That's right. That's right. It's like, uh, well, immersed in music for, forever and um, not having the aspiration for it ever I can tell you that much. There was a, um, inside me, I was, um, I was, I suppose I was just looking to, find 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 whatever I was in amongst the emotions and feelings that I felt then but um yeah I music was always an out not an outlet for me but solace I find solace in music so we used to have to clean the nightclub in, on Saturdays. It wasn't easy life. On Saturday mornings me and my little sister would have to go down into the cellar and and actually remove all the bottles, mop the floor, sweep the floor, over the floor, um, uh, change the bar. It was it was it was that small, but in that we were allowed to turn the music on and whatever records were down there that my mum had down there. So we're talking just to be clear on this. We're talking about the Miss Ross Rose Ro- Rose, Rose Windross. Rose. That's right. Sure. Yeah. So these two together were doing the cleanliness of the club. <laughs> yes, and, and then on top of it, due to force majeure, playing music, playing music. There was a there was a there was a big piano down there in the back as well. We taught ourselves to play some tunes on that. I remember we we'd mess about quite a lot, obviously, because my mum was sleeping. We'd be down there having the having the run of the downstairs, including the bar. By the way, it was naughty stuff. And um, we would just play. We would do some play, do some work, do some chores, play some music, play the piano. Um, found that found found some loves of certain artists. Rosemary fell in love with the stylistics. I remember she just like started collecting their records from young. So, ah, yeah. who was musically trained on the piano to play? No, we taught ourselves. Oh, so you. We taught ourselves to pluck tunes out. Neither of us could play um, as such, and neither of us had us had training or 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 lessons or anything. But um, we we taught ourselves to do the simple tunes and find chords and that. And I suppose I, su- I suppose we must have developed musical ears without the rest of it, if you know what I mean. So Rosemary w- went deeper into the music earlier, much deeper. So she threw herself into trying to understand it to use her voice and all that stuff hence hence she um got a she, she made an album when she was very young when when she was 16 she made a reggae album called just rose i think it was number one in the in the in the lovers rock charts back then but enough about her no, it's an important part about her. We love her. That's what we need to ask. <laughs> because she's yeah. entangled with I'm, you I'm, as much I'm, as I'm trying. I'm, I'm, wait, sometimes wait. I've got to remember I'm, I'm actually here interviewing about myself, but if but I can't, if I don't talk about um, the 
the stuff that the, the things around me that that I remember well that made me but again like I wasn't that interested in the music industry or DJing at much at the time I was more interested in in nightclubs so by the time I, I was out from 12 13 in nightclubs in the royalty and like dancing and finding my own thing in music which was literally just that soul soul sound the early hip hop sound uh, what they what they call it hip hop now but but maybe um but Are we really talking into about like rappers delight type of rappers thing? delight they appeared at um at Southgate in Royal it was called the Royalty Froggy was a DJ there and he was an amazing DJ um right up front club it was really up front with its music and and um that's what I got immersed in that that soul that soul sound <laughs> And that's why I'm asking those questions, because to, in order to understand the road that you're on now, somewhere along the line, Froggy came to New York in the middle of the disco era. That's Froggy amazing. hung out with Larry Levan, brought it at, what he learned here or shown, brought it back to England with the Froggy sound system. Moving from city to city around, I guess that sound system thing was a big thing back then. Um, and a lot of a lot of people I've interviewed from the UK always talk about those sound systems and what they did and the change. Because I guess there was nothing like that prior to that, right? I, I mean, there was, um, I, from when I was young, the the first thing I knew about sound systems was the reggae thing. So let's have it, let's have it completely straight. The, the sound system itself belongs, it's a Jamaican thing. It's a create your own boxes make the make the make the bins and make the base and everything was about getting as much energy out of those systems as possible and um that's why they call them sound systems i think the soul thing was more clubs was not so much systems although there were systems that were playing across the board that because the other thing about back then is outside of the illegal stuff the shabins and that there weren't no late licenses for clubs so people were hooking up systems in in houses and emptying the houses out and then you'd have the different systems in different areas and the you you find the ones that were that had the bigger followings and come carnival time that's when they rocked most you know and i remember under the bridge you'd go down there and I'd go down there and um, just stand and listen to the music and feel the vibe. That's what it was all about. I've done research and they've shown in the Jamaican reggae that that stuff goes back to the late 40s and the 50s in Jamaica with the sound systems on the street. They would set those things up. It wasn't something that just happened in the 60s, late 60s, 70s. They were already doing that in Jamaica for a while. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So give it up to the Jamaicans. You know, yeah. the Caribbean was, you know, the sound system selector, and it was one turntable, not two. That's it. That's and it. Record. That's it. Yeah. Brim like, to brim, right? Even, even today, even today, the one sounds, the one turntable, they, they make, they created effects boxes themselves. So all those, doo -doo 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 -doo, all of that was, is a, is a Jamaican legacy, you know? Sound system legacy. So, yeah. And I'm proud to say I come from that. Damn right, boy. You should be proud. That's a very yeah. good legacy. And I know that I experienced that in the earlier part of the UKG sound when I used to go out because I would be, let's put it like this, I'd be playing in the other room and I would go into the room at the Coliseum, for example, yeah. and the UKG, and you'd hear those sounds from Jamaican reggae. <laughs> slipping yeah. into UKG sounding records and also yeah. effects and stuff. That horn sound and all that stuff. It was kind of to get the crowd ecstatic and excited. But enough of that. We'll keep going on your journey. So Froggy and them, of course, you're going out. Hip-hop is becoming the first part of the legacy of the, what we call the dance golden path that you're yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That um, When I was in the clubs... At, at my, I'd say, at, at, at the height of me being in the clubs was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Obviously, I stayed in the clubs 21, 22, 22 23. But 
but those times I was just a just like I worked and I went out to nightclubs. That's all I done. I was and, yeah. And I had, I, I, that, but you gotta explain to to people why was there anything else at that time? Was there computers around? And was no, there no. And, you have to tell that, people the, what the life was like at the, that time. Well, well, life at, at that time was it was it it was you go to the club. Virtually all clubs that when I was that age were were, were done by one o'clock in the morning. That was late. You'd um, either get bus or tube or whatever you got home. If you wanted to stay out, you'd walk the street literally and just listen for the music and gate crash because there used to be so many street parties back then. Um, the music, the music was. It, it was eclectic. It was it was sold. It sold bass, but it was eclectic. You there everything through the night. Um, African. I remember African bam, Bambata tunes. Uh, um, the Soul Sonic Force tune when it first came out, it destroyed the place, and um, and affected definitely affected hard with that electro sound as well. Uh, that's what we lived. For. That's what I lived for. I I had the mother of my big kids. I was with her from sixteen. But we were young, you know, it was, it was, it, nothing was, um, nothing was that solid to me, if you know what I mean. We were just together a long time. She gave me my two oldest children. I love her to death for that. And I, and my, and if I'm honest, my children that changed my life around, but that took me away from music, if you like, because from that, I thought I've got to look after my young family and went down the straight path and didn't go out as much and um and realized that i was a bit sharper than i thought i was i, I and i got into the life of sales because i went into earn more, more money and i realized ah our two twos i can i started a company that was selling some stuff carpet cleaning as it was and then 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 that 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 didn't work pan out and then i got into selling double glazing and that seemed like earn some Good money, better money than I would have done if, when I left work at nineteen, and and it was just about providing and for my for me and my young family at the time, and that was my identity. I believed that was my identity anyway. And um, were you I, were you even playing around with DJing yet at that time? Not, no, not at all. So you were this just is, clubbing, just total clubber, and just clubbing, living life at home. I was more living life at home at the time, and um, and uh, trying to. I bought my, I bought a house by the time I was twenty four, and um, just settled. And I thought that was going to be me, but um, it's it, this is the, what brought me into the clubs, uh, into the raves, and this is the transition was um around about 25 26 i i went through a what i now know was a complete breakdown meltdown depression i just didn't know what i was who i was why i was um and um caused the split up be, uh, me and 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 jackie my wife at the time um i felt like i was abandoning my children um and i got depressed and just around that time, I'd been into the nightclubs to that early acid house thing. And um, after a bit of this and that, um, it became a release for me because I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have that release because I was proper in a, it, it, at the bottom of the pit in my mind, you know. So, so you and um, I will say that two things saved my life. Yeah, my daughter saved my life when she came when I was just barely 20 because she made me want to live for more than myself because I didn't really care about living or dying at the time. I was just uh, just getting by and I was hustling as well and, you know, um, didn't have the greatest respect for life, if I'm honest. So this, she this, made me this she made your, me want more. Is that my your kids, I say her to start off with, her and my son Daniel, they made me make, want more for life because I wanted more for them. And um, and then when I realised I couldn't hang about for them and that destroyed me, that's the thought. I couldn't hang about and be with my kids even though my father had left me. And I left and I was torn inside. And 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 um, like I'm saying to you, I met some little fellas. They, 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 they gave me a different 
different idea about life whilst I was raving with them, if you know what I mean. And um, and I'm I never grasped myself, by the way. <laughs> but um, and and I found house music, I found acid house music initially, which I didn't like too much. But when that vocal house music started giving those messages of positivity and hope and vibration free at last, you know what I'm talking about, the the early era. Um, I think that was the next thing that saved me from from well, it it gave me something to 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 stop me from thinking about myself for sure. And I threw myself into raving virtually full time. Uh, and that's that was really that that little that I say that little that that the time span from that would have been from 88, 89, when I got on it hard, 88, 89, 90, the music and the genres that happened in that space of time was it, it felt like something new was coming, it was changing, it was evolving. That went from like eclectic, bit of this, bit of that, to over air anyway. Um from the fields into the clubs and in the clubs you've got these different sounds some harder I can't remember I can't tell you how many different names or genres come around and I realized that the genre of music that I loved listening to was disappearing amongst especially on my on on, on my side where I was going and um what was coming was the hardcore which I like the early stuff of but the hardcore and which turned in, which basically ultimately turned into the the jungle drum and bass, those things, neither of which were my thing, just a little bit too fast for me. I love the best music of it, but couldn't, didn't want to be in the clubs with it, if I'm honest. And really that's, but, and I'd been dabbling with the decks by then, by the way, I've been dabbling with a crew of people around with decks and I bought my first decks and, and in early 1990, I just thought, um, I just thought, I ne wanted to do something myself and put something on that I'd like to go to. So we looked for a club, we looked for a little club on a night where, where no, what, where I didn't have no competition to go out and or anything because I did need to go out, did need to be about it because I was a bit of a face then and um, couldn't stop going out. But I thought if I do something on a Tuesday or Wednesday for myself like 200 club with some people and that's what I done started a night called yum yum and that was i think that was early 91 when we started that and we just started playing strictly rhythm i believe was launched about them as then as well and a number a bunch of other labels come were come in and and um and that's the type of music we played the because Strictly Rhythm gave a lot of music in a short oh, space of the time. American, the American house sound was the beginnings of the of the yum yum sound of that club, that's right? right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So so yeah, that that and um I mean love dancing and tracks like that destroyed our club. Crystal Waters um destroyed our club. It's like um Eric Morello's dancing and that some of that uh, that some of that some of those early tunes but that's what we was on and um there were other people on it as well there, there was the Lyndon C I met we knew each other well Ricky Morrison and that and but what I think what distinguished yum yum from maybe the that other UK house and garage sound is is we um we played the music a bit faster and maybe we were a bit more raucous than than we weren't that smooth if you know what i mean we were we were, we were more street that's, and more a good, hard. that's a question i've always wanted to ask why did you play it faster the music i felt i felt it it made people want to dance but more harder do you know what i mean i felt it was like it's like i love the personally it was it was about the the beat the, the bass line and the and the and the melody yeah and when i say the melody i don't mean the song i mean the melody the the if you could get hooks going over and over again that's why we tended to play unless the song was big like 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 um 
um, for Crystal Waters and that. But generally speaking, we were on that hooky, hooky thing. You got me, la. Oh, what a tune. You got me, you got me, la. And, doom, 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 doom. and the drums. So you play that a bit faster. Rather than plodding, you were bouncing, you know. You were like, well, that's what that's what I felt from it anyway. And so. that changes, yeah, because I'm going to guess other aspiring young DJs are in the crowd watching you all play behind the decks and they're feeling the vibe and they're seeing what's going on around them. And of course, others start to copy, you know, that. And, and that would have been, that would have been cause like 91 to 93, four. I mean, I started making my name as a DJ in 91 because of that. And people started booking me, you know, people started booking me elsewhere, which I, which come out of the blue for me because it wasn't the ambition for me to be a DJ. But people started booking me, I suppose, because of the vibe that we had in the club and um, hoping that we get some of the people from our club to follow me down there. So I started playing for people that maybe needed more people in their clubs. Sure. Um, but then I've got to say that um, the other thing that it was was it was – it, uh, we 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 didn't have the we we had a crowd that was um maybe a little more hard to deal with than than just your straight up party goer if you know what I mean. So okay, so, so then it, tell so me. Okay, it, wait, 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 hang on, brother man. So sell me on this idea. You are as the promoter slash DJ. You walk into someone's room. And you bring in this crowd and you know what you're dealing with because, you know, like you said, it's a bit of a harder crowd. They're not your glitzy handbag crowd. Let's put it nicely. Well, well no, I'm not. No, I think you got that. What early yeah, clarify, days, yeah, clarify. early days, what it was, what it, early days, what it was, was there were raves and there were clubs and there were there was uh, your smoother type clubs. And then there was. And it's not that they weren't because they wore their hand, but the girls wore their handbags if they were there. But it was just that let's say I'm just gonna say it straight. It was more road orientated people, people that come from um people that come from maybe not working and doing other things to you know, people that were capable outside. They were like, if you know what I mean. Well, but let's make everybody talking from a New York side. So if we're running a club here. We would have gangsters, drug dealers, all kinds of the and that, and and, have, and, and, and they're, they're, they're sort they're sort of the earth, right? You know, and they were. I'm they not could putting be, them down. They got they could be, too. And they could, they could be out all the time. And um, I suppose um, house and garage, UK garage is it is now, but house and garage as we called it back then. This at this side of house and garage was that. It was a bunch of that lot of people, us lot of people, whatever you want to call it, and we like and and we love to party. That's it. It was like it was our release. We weren't, we didn't want to bring the road into the club. We left the road outside and and brought the, like you say, and brought the, and brought the money and brought the clothes. We brought that stuff, and the girls come along because the music was bumpy and. But it was it was your darker light characters, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Society doesn't allow these type of people to party comfortably and relax in these in this environment. You could be who you want to be, and no one's gonna mess with you. There you go. Because the go. music is all about the music. Yeah. And those that know, no, do not cross that line because you do well, not want to deal with what's coming with at you in another minute. <laughs> well, I'm, if I'm if I'm real about it. There were situations that 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 gave gave the sound itself a bad reputation because things could could happen and things could kick off, um, and things did kick off quite a lot. So, so it's not all every every venue, but you know it only has to happen once to give you a bad a bad reputation. And um, and I suppose uh, a lot of us that were in deep in the scene started garnishing that reputation we wouldn't we, i stopped getting booked for the for the money pennies and the gate crashes after a while because you get associated right 
And why did you get stuck? Because they didn't want the element that comes with the music. And the element that sometimes comes with the music is... And it happened in America. It happened yes. here as well, because with the, as you guys were doing that, while we were having our big house events and underground, like a shelter or sound factory, yes. the same time you had hip hop parties and hip hop parties come gunfights, stabbings, killings, and it's loads of money rolling around. But the element of, oh my God, if I bring this crowd in, I may not have a club. That's right. That much yeah. Time. Well, we we couldn't get clubs. That's the point of the matter. That a lot of the element that was that was building our sound, we couldn't get a club. We couldn't get a club for our thing, <laughs> for love nor money on a on a Saturday night. Um, we started getting Friday nights when Friday nights started becoming a little less harder to fill because we did have the crowds. We had the four five, the strong four five hundred, and they were spenders. And um, and so what we tend to do is take the clubs when other people wouldn't take the clubs. So Sunday became a big day for us. Um, after parties on Fridays and Saturdays we came to the after party thing was big for us. And um, and that's where we that's where we found our vibe. Uh, the, 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 and then um, just I mean, from my perspective, I didn't see what was going on in, elsewhere. But it was happening. Or it, it, it felt like it felt like all of a sudden there were there were DJs around that I didn't know until. And I thought, wow, okay, this scene is bigger than what I'm dealing with. This scene is it's happening, and I de don't even know it's happening. It was spreading. It had spread like wildfire, if you know what I mean. The sound and the scene, and it was slightly different here and there. But yeah would you say your <laughs> sunday party was the most important part in the early days i'd say I, I wouldn't in the early days i'd say it was the after party but sunday became a day for um house and garage because no one else was doing it doing anything on those days so 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 um some of the legendary nights that um happened in those times daytime on sunday day day not nighttime on sunday so daytime on sunday nighttime on sunday leading to sometimes daytime on monday it was very after party thing because like i'm saying to you a lot of the crowd weren't your average joe worker needing to get up nine to five you know <laughs> so yeah so it didn't didn't matter it doesn't matter when you have that kind of situation. We can we can put on parties. We can put on parties and have people turn up because that that, that, that and then eventually you know it started swelling to normal people coming to those parties as well. Um, I, 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 moving forward to the spread love era when Dominic took over the the, the gas club and and then. Um, and then uh, Timmy was doing Happy Days originally and Frog and Night Ground and the, the Elephant Castle. And uh, all these different people were finding these different places. It's like Alan, Alan had EC1 on a Sunday night um, in the early days. Uh, locations on a Sunday. These are names that only those that know will know. But these were the places that built that put the foundations in for so at that time garage. norris how big would you say the parishioners were of this scene like you you know you're spreading out five six seven clubs now how big is the scene at this time you think so i'd say anywhere like there was one stage where i actually felt it was 500 strong i i, I would see I, I, it, it wasn't that I counted, but I reckoned we would fill clubs. We could fill um, Cat de Parry, for example, on a Sunday daytime. Someone was doing it on Sunday daytime and it would be chocolate. It'd be really busy in there. And it held 600 people. And I'd know basically virtually, by, at least by sight, most of that 600. You know, it would be the same. It, and then I'd go another place and I'd know most of the people there. So I used to say 500 strong for a little while um big up 500 records by the way and um 
but then I don't know when because then I realized right well, it's bigger than that even it's like there's there's it's it's I don't know, I don't know when it got to the thousand or two thousand yeah, but something happens like I asked that to MC Creed as well when does it when does this I mean okay let me rephrase that let me take it back for a second along the way of you DJing when does the actual microphone selector um mc guy begin to take place along with you um so 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 there were a couple of mcs that and i would give this to um i'll give this to um the credit of mcs on garage sets i'm going to give the credit to um dominic spread love he was the one that would con constantly bring an MC and it was it was it was through him that I met Chris rarely as an MC anyway we knew each other but as an MC why is an MC and um I suppose it was just that that's um spread love on a Sunday gas club 1994 um is when all of a sudden you Chris's voice started becoming the voice of of UK Garage, the first Garage MC, definitely for me, and um, renowned. And he'd do something that other MCs wouldn't do. He put some, some he put some tones down that were just like, un, 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 <laughs> no, no one else was doing was the way he done that. Where they're doing it again, that would he you he said that once, and the club would go crazy um everywhere anywhere you heard that and so First that was one and then voice, brother his voice is so distinct nobody sounds like him that's another thing he knows how to yeah. rap but it's and it's his of... and it's and, and it's the and it's the deepness of his lyrics as well so when he when he's not he's not just he's not just typing he's actually he's actually giving you some depth with what with with the lyrics that he's talking about he's doing it cryptically but when you listen to his lyrics at this out, out, out it's out of the game so the explosion of that combination is where really this thing starts to take its own place in music history you know mm -hmm. the rap reggae rap sound with the beats what's the first would you say the first recording that comes out from the uk guys that you say, you know, okay, example, Marshall Jefferson's house music anthem is a really big record. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's when it goes overground. Like, what is that moment where you say, whoa, this is the record that changes the game? What for um for UK, what, with an MC on it or for UK garage? What's the UK garage sound? Because you guys are playing, you know, masses of work oh, set up and all that oh, stuff. Oh, so, so when I started really taking the DJing thing seriously and realized, oh, it was like we've got this thing here, you know, and like I remember feeling like it would, it, it, I had this feeling of pride that the way this thing had, had had grown from what it was when I first recognized it to what it was at that time, and and I realized I'm playing all over the place, and I was watching my record box and. It was predominantly US based, and then, um, and and then it's like I actually took notice of the UK sound, and I'd be hearing the tunes in the shop, and basically it took a little while for me to begin to buy that stuff because I felt it, it wasn't for my ears anyway where it needed to be but for other people it was what it was but um for me there was a track by um oh, what's it called uh, dun, 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 dun. my brain's gone dead with it now absolutely dead it's not the tune because um Matt Jam Lamont and Justin Cantor made the early tune that killed and destroyed the clubs, which we all rated in. It was Feel My Love. I don't know, it, 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 it was, I don't know if it got, what label it was on, because he played it in the gas club once on, on a white label and it had writing on it. And 
And I just, I kind of like begged him for it. I said, give me it. <laughs> and he gave me it. Please give it to me. Please. Give it. He gave me that copy there and then. And so I've still got that copy to this day. So that was a big track, Feel My Love. But um, what they call Gavin Mills and, and Brian Farms were in the studio at the time. They were the guys that got me in there. And they, they originally had um, someone called Nathan. I'm trying to remember what he went out as. And um, I, and the track was called Over You, Over You. And it was very musical. Da, 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 da. Everything was built, built right until the bass like, doom, 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 doom. And like, for me, that was a tune that carved a way for British sound as oh, well. Wow. It's still 4-4, four, four, it's still trying to be American, but it had something more as did the UK tunes and the American dubs now, because the accentuation was on the skip and was on the bass and the bounce. That's what started happening. Uh, when was T when was um Never Let It Go? That was still quite early, still that that record, which is another one because it wasn't British, but but the two step mix, which actually right, that's, right. that's that's another thing. The two step thing started becoming more prominent, right? Well, again, it's, it was all happening quite early. So when I say so from 95, 96, it's like you had, um, I, I was, that Tina Moore was it, the, the emptiness and the, and, and the organ and never there, dun, 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 dun. so it would kill the place. I, I couldn't believe. In fact, I still think it might be, I've still got whoever the producer is, because I'm not sure who the producer is. I know what I read. Yeah, but it was a lot of things like that back then. There's all these white labels running around, right? Well, it was on a label, and it said and said that someone had done it. But I just every time I listen to record, I think I recognise the sounds as being someone else. But I'm not going to say it right now. But um, whoever done it, it destroyed the place. Then you had them too. Um, that 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 kind of like for me started really making the British two-step sound called Destiny, a track called Destiny, which was killing it 90, 90, 96. And, and then everything, I mean, I think a whole load of two-step stuff started flying in then um, and, and really taking over the hype funk tuna uh, um, in, the, in the UK clubs. And that's what, when I say, actually the stamp of the UK sound was now here what was what was driving the clubs although american although you had those tracks that that um were, were coming in still from stateside you had a lot of um british producers and labels now coming up with a sound confetti um 500 records oh, there's there's too too many to mention Probably. Myself, I made my first. Um, I made made my first tune. Well, it wasn't my first. I made a couple before that, but I made a tune with Gavin and Brian. They and uh, it's called Funky Groove. Um, actually, I say I made a tune. You actually showed a tune called "Used to Hold Me" to me earlier, which was we went. This, I went into the studio with them, and we actually just I brought some vinyls in and some ideas, and we just put down a little an EP, a little seven inch EP to start off with. Then we done used to hold me. Then we remixed one of the tunes called Funky Groove off the seven inch, which became the one that the one that actually put my name on the map as a producer because um, yeah, it went out as noise to the boss Windross and, and it was just a little firing little, little, little dub really so so you've actually um, found your way into a studio without even pushing for that that just sort of someone it, it's them that's it, 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 it was gavin that said come come because he loved my vibe on the decks he said let's get that vibe down on the record you know so let's get that vibe so we worked together a, a couple of bits i've got to say going in with him gave me a bug i bought i bought a mac I bought them back after about three months and just started learning number one about Macs because I didn't really know about about computers at the time. So and that thing would so I had to learn to build it and put it back together again <coughs> with regards to programs and the 
and the, um, how it all works, the, 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 um, the structure and everything. And, um, and, lear and I started learning at the time, uh, at the time, no, I'm lying, Lenny. I wait, actually wait, wait, wait. can't lie. First, Come on, the tell first, the true house stories. I'm lying. I actually bought to start off with Steinberg on the on the was it the Amstrad? Um, I've got it, still got it in the garage. Um, with the dongle on that first little computer. You sure is it, is it called Amstrad or Atari? No, Atari. That's it. Atari. I've got it in the computer. I still got it. My first one. So I, so I bought that. I got one of them and I had the Steinberg on it, the one where you had the, the dongle and plugged it in, started learning the learning Steinberg. But very soon after was when the Mac kicked in and I thought I could have one of them. So I got one of them with, 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 with Cubase and started learning to use it very badly. But I, well, I, well, I was well, in. The thing is, well, here's the thing. It's not like today where you just drag and drop and everything is pre-made. Back then, you had to learn everything from the beginning, and bit like you said, build it. It was like, yeah, you had you needed you needed um, outboard. You there weren't no plugins, so you needed outboard for the sound. You need to sort of plug everything in, understand how to work everything, and wire it all up. Um, that was before I actually started picking, realizing that actually I need some really good sound modules and what have you. So. It became a hobby for me rather than work because I was, if I weren't DJing, I was partying. <laughs> so you were proper. And if I weren't partying, I was being, I was being my daddy. The other that, just, so for me, it, it, most of my time was taken up with, with um, other things. Proper grafter. I'm saying before proper grafter. Yeah. But you know what? There's a lot of money rolling around too in that time as well in the in the UKG scene because there's gigs coming in, there's places to promote. It's fresh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, getting paid, getting paid um, for the gigs, putting gigs on, um, getting paid for some of the music. It was, it was, it was. Um, it was an exciting time. It was very exciting time, and um, but um, I can't talk about it in the way uh, someone that had an ambition would talk about it because I had no ambition. I was already doing more than what I thought I would be doing. What do you I mean was, you have no ambition? I had no ambition. I know, I know that. But what does that exactly mean? It means that I was already in a place that I loved getting more than I thought I ever would, if you know what I mean, from something. I, would, I, It wasn't that I thought I want to be a superstar DJ or I want to be here or I want to be there. I was where I was, you know. And, yes, you look around and you take it to the degree, you take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of you, but I didn't have no vision of what was next for a long time. I was just, this is wicked. This is great. So you're because just going... Do the flow. I'm with the flow. I'm with the flow. With the flow. That's what I was. That's what I was with. And 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 appreciating it as well. Um, I was. My mindset was still pretty broken when it came to thoughts and feelings about myself. If you understand what I'm saying. So, just to be there was was magical for me. Somewhere that where where I was getting, if you like a certain amount of self-respect for myself because I was doing something that I realized people appreciated and, um, and, and, and I appreciate it. So I love the, in, I love the interaction of, and I still love the interaction of how, wow, I can put a tune on, I can put another tune on and I can mix and I love mixing. I'd like, I love that creation of, of, of a vibe within two, two, two tracks and, listening to the formulation of a new thing and um getting off on that energy that that creative energy the vibe the dance floor energy the energy that i i believe unites people or can unite people and that's my aim when i get on the dance floor it's that's my aim when i write when i write a tune i really feel like it's more with you because i've been around you outside this music thing yeah. i feel like it's more like 
a person like yourself says, hey, come on in, make yourself comfortable, leave all your problems behind. We're going to just enjoy ourselves. Yeah. No strings attached. Oh, lovely. No inhibitions. We're not doing this for money. Lovely. We're doing this because we love what we do. Is that it? Yeah. That's it. That's it. And then anything else is a bonus. Anything else is a bonus. Okay. So, so now and... here's the questions now that come out of this. You're coming in with the non intrinsic way. You're doing a course. You're making money. And this is love. Like it's like flower power. We love each other. When not does the quite, war not quite, begin? Not you know quite I mean. flower, but you know. You know what I mean? Flower power meaning everybody. Yeah, I know. I get cool. you. But everybody's yeah. super cool. Nobody's look, trying look, to kill each other. Look, look, there's stuff out there, right? There is stuff out there, and I've got my stuff out there, as other people have got their stuff out there. But this is where I, this is where I want to be. This is a place, and this is a feeling I want to keep, and and to bring forward. This is this is where I want to be, and. That that I got out there, I'm trying to shut the door on it. That's why I want. I don't to mean family. I'm talking about the feeling of what can happen when you're out there being that thing. You know. Yeah. Then how do you control the part that becomes the darker side of it? Well, out of your out of your world. You know well, what I'm saying. But, how do you but, keep it? Well, that's what I'm saying to you. It's a, it's, 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 it's keeping yourself in, in situations where, where that doesn't rear its head that much. But you come from, if you come from that, you're gonna, it's gonna come to you. It's like the vibration. We know that what happens with it, right? It attracts. So it's just a, it's just an evolutionary thing that, that as, as, as I've got, as we've got older, that's around us less because it's. It's in us less. That's it. No, because no, I get that. But in the in, but you know what you're dealing with young people. And well, people. we were young again. We were young, and look, um, I, 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 the things that I've seen, and the things I've seen happen, and the th and, and 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 recognize that. You know they're not. It's like it's this ain't this ain't a film out here, but it is a film out here. If you know what I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not. Like the, I ain't seen stuff with rose-colored glasses. There's been lots of things that have gone on that have caused me to realize that. But I, that's where I come from. I don't come from a place that that expects everything to be peaceful and good and everyone treating everyone with respect and no darkness can happen. I come from a place where darkness happens, you know? Sure. Let me ask you this part. Now that we've gotten through this and through the nineties and at the end of the nineties, I remember you guys, you and Creed and a few others created the, um, Jason, the me, 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 myself, Chris and Jason were partners and, and um, that was that was one of my first big visions outside of what I was doing, and it was a vision that was born from appreciating that whatever this was that brought me to this stage of my life gave me an outlet that I that that wasn't afforded to me. No one actually picked anything up and said, "Yeah, you have this. Here's the root for you." It's something that we carved out somehow. It's something that was. That, that that I call I call it kick the doors off a little bit because all of a sudden we're in the clubs we're in where we want to be and we're 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 making dough and we're we're creating our own and we're destroying the nightclubs and we're everywhere but still we're not in that place that can actually say we're going to be here and be here continually and I and and looking at the the US model of um, Hip hop and how that went from where it was to where it is now to indeed to where it is now today. And I thought, okay, and I worked it I, in my head. I'm thinking, well, it's America's much bigger, bigger market than that, and and what have you. But if we can get ourselves up on stages, bigger stages, and we can get our artists on bigger stages, and we can encourage these one track 
writers to write albums and maybe they can see themselves on stage doing tours rather than just singing in nightclubs, you know? And maybe we can be the promoters, right? And maybe we can make the records big. Right. And that's why that was the vision that for UKG, right? So not just do a do a, a little an awards ceremony in a little club, but to book a and a big stage, Emma Smith Odeon it turned out to be the first one and 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 put and put the production in and actually get some A stars to A list stars like at the time to present it to give the awards away and and that's what we done with our with our own budget, you know. Um we didn't get that. See, that's so I want you people to understand that. Yeah. You just said the magic words. You did it with your own money. Yeah. Self, you know, self-proclaimed. It is what you know, the vision wanted to come to, to fruition. And the only way to do it is you have to put up the money and the and all the passion that goes with it and the pain. And the pain. And it what it was pain because it didn't make money. <laughs> In fact, it took money. But we felt we felt it was um the foundation, you know, laying a foundation and that and the first one was successful. Everyone loved everyone that the performance. I'm, I'm extremely proud of what happened. If we had social media at that time, it would have exploded. Forget, forget what money we would have made then. We would have had all the footage on social media. We it would have exploded. It was just to come pop. But that was just before it's like 2000 and not everyone would work. It's like I'd only just built my first website or had it built. Yeah, nobody um, knew what that stuff was. It was like, early yeah, days. you know what I mean? So, Listen, you were working on fax machines, there on you a go. regular landline. There you go. What there are you go. thinking about? We, uh, we, we, had, we, we did have emails, but that, and we did have downloads, but. You didn't want to download nothing in those days. There's no doubt about that. So, so yes, um, we done that. We done that, and we had it. We done the the next year as well. We did get sponsored partially on the next year. We done it in Brixton Academy, and um, we were like we were lining up year three, um, uh, and it just felt like the bottom of the world fell out for us in late two thousand and one because a lot of stuff happened around that time. It's funny when I look at that time, look at 9-11 um, and I look at um, what happened in, on our scene with the, all the, the bad press regarding particularly So Solid with a shooting at, a, uh, it was at Astoria, was it Astoria at that time? Yeah. And um, we were getting a lot of bad, bad press and um, the police were cancelling a lot of our nights using the excuse that um they the the s they the sh 101 gun crime squad was was put together the 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 what was it the there was a form that the clubs had to fill in to let them know that who was playing and if certain people were playing the police could pull the night and from having all the clubs in all the urban venues in all the country basically having garage virtually, virtually every weekend, it virtually stopped overnight. And I'm not, that's not even a joke. My, just, my it's diary like went... hit the brakes, right? So somebody hit the brakes. I mean, it was, it, it, it was astonishing. Like you, I would never have banked of that happening, being able, being able to happen. But it was like, it was like someone just pulled the plug on it. Do you really it believe the shooting, the shooting had that much pressure I, I, I'm not. I'm not going to say That's it was shooting one. I'm That's saying shooting. there was a bunch of things that happened all at once. Um, the um, the fact that they were they were tagging that all of the all of the there was a lot of there was a lot on the street. There was a lot of beef going on, and gun crime was at a height or getting stronger and. The, the things happened, like murders were happening. I'm just saying that straight, yeah, on the street, sometimes in clubs. Um, and um, and when they decided to take notice of it, mainly because we were getting, if, if, if the press on us was really good, i.e. 
the the youth of the UK in the urban loved us, so we get good press most places in the magazines. But actually, then uh, um, when the mainstream press, all they seemed to want to highlight was the was the worst things, and that's what killed it, you know. Because what you, so, what did you do? What did you do to to make up the difference? I mean, what what, uh, what? what there was for me, there was no making up the difference because my whole career has been built around nightclubs and that's it no nightclubs what am i gonna do because i weren't a radio dj i've never been a radio dj never never had any any um ambition to play music in a radio station if you know what i mean or hadn't up until that point my thing was just nightclubs i was in the nightclubs i was in the in the entertainment business as far as i'm concerned i wanted to put parties on or play at parties or be in venues that was that was that was what was the love of my life you know so i mean because that transition of you know financially and also your passion your heart of entertaining has been as they say the rug has been pulled out from under you so now what what did you do fi- you know what did you do did you just say i'm done or did you Stick no, we, I, I, I still, we're still making music, but that became harder and harder to be selling because um, the music that we were making was not the darker energy music, if you like. And um, and if I'm honest, uh, and I only recognise this afterwards as well because I'd been through one depression, um, and and. Uh, and uh and uh i think i basically was was making ends meet from 2002 to 2005 6 just doing it playing here and there doing bits and pieces hustling cuz cuz that's what i am I, basically i'm a hustler i've been hustling all my fucking life so i'm hustling to make money, however, I see. Oh, oops. So wait a minute. See, That's his guy. He's, 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 he's looking for him. They're looking for his money. How, how is that? Shut up. They're looking for coins from you. Wait a second. Everybody's looking. Because he's Yeah, he's, that's what I am. Who's asking you to listen? Watch these phones, you know. Watch what you're saying in your house because That's they're right. listening. It's listening. Right? So so I've but I also realized. I was depressed. I, I got. I realized in about two thousand and end of two thousand five, six that actually I'm depressed. I'm actually not, not what I. I, I mean, I, and I admitted that to myself and thought I've got to get myself in, got get got to get some help for this, and um, actually actually made an appointment to go and see my doctor and just say, you know what, it's like I'm not. Um, two seconds i'm not um i'm not i'm not in i'm not in my best of states and i'm actually needing a bit of help here and um, my doctor said yeah no problem i can i can and refer you but uh, but that won't be for maybe six months or something but in the meantime he wrote me out a prescription and i and i just thought i'm not taking those tablets i've taken other tablets for a long time but i'm not taking those tablets you know so, so you were self-medicating I, yourself on the street side. Well, ever since, ever, ever since, ever since I left my wife and kids, I've been self-medicating to get me through. If you know what I mean. So, um, this whole rave thing was a self-medication. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um... And that's something that people don't really understand. They see us all happy and they see the party atmosphere. Yeah. But when that music shuts off and you're alone and your mind starts to wander. This so, is let, what... so let me say the thing that built this thing that I'm on um, was the party and the, and the vibe of the music helped that party and we developed a group of us, a group of pit group of us that I I feel we were on the same level. And this group, that, and it might have been, I mean, maybe 60, 100 strong. Some would be there all the time. But at one stage in the early 90s, 
I'd say 92, 3, 4, 5, 6. You could make a phone call and find a party in someone's house at any time of the day. So some people would come back from what they were doing. Some of them worked and whatever you say, call up, well, what's happening? What's that? And we'd hold it around Angie. Oh, around, around noise now. And there was a bunch of places that regularly we you knew those people would hold and have people in their house and music be playing, and the exchange of alcohol and whatever, and and clothes and the sharing of things and really just being there in the music and the buzz, you know? Sure. That was a big part of, of my life. Of course. And when that all stopped, now what do you have as a vice? Well, the thing is that all kind of like faded. So I'm not talking about, because come 2000, come 99, 2000, I, it, it was more, I was more professional then. It was like I recognised what we had around us and it was, trying, it was trying to look for the way to sustain that which is why we don't, which is why the idea of UKG come along um, and um, i.e. the UKG Awards. By the way, it was a, it was UK Garage Awards. We branded it UKG. And a lot of people have got that now say UKG as if it's the as if it's the music. And it is related to UK Garage, but UKG is the brand that we created. And and we stamped that with those big block capital letters with a with you. a K G. That's right. Wow. Yeah. No, I mean, you see, this is interesting. You know, this, this is, I'm just so glad you, you know, you shared this part about, you know, your personal life. Because again, nobody really ever talks about these things that what, when the party stops, what happens? Well, we, be, we become, we 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 hang on to life, right? Because if we if we can, we hang on to life. Because I'm not even joking, um, Lenny. I don't want to bring. I don't. But I'm saying, my thoughts were dark. My thoughts for myself were dark, and and I didn't want to be here. I didn't think that well of myself. I didn't. I, so it was. It the the escapism for me was necessary for me to s survive. And that's why I owe so much to it because I don't think I would have survived, Lenny. I don't think I would have survived. Does it go back to you, the situation when you were a kid, carrying all that with you along the way? You know, the, as we say, it's what we carry on our back. Yeah. You know. Well, and... it's it, it, if you want to take this to a deep place, it's like I, I, right now I'm sixty, right, and um, and. Uh, and and all of that journey through my life, I'm very, it's like it's here, it's here to, um, it's here where you realise the traumas that you don't know are traumas as a child, right? But they're traumas, and they and they 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 turn you into whatever you turn into. And I recognise all the stages of my trauma, and 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 what actually happened, the, the consequence of my trauma, was 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 put me in a place where my mindset was it wasn't forward thinking it was it was survivalist it was quite aggressive it was protective it was it was it was quite closed like me and mine you know um and I'm I'm never saying I was a bad person because I, I know I've never been a bad person wanting bad things but I'm definitely was capable um, oh sure, of that, course. Things you know, look, desperate situations drive you to to do yeah. crazy stuff. We all yeah. know that. We've heard these stories from very famous people to people who are, you know, yeah, normal it, Joe. There's you know, no distinguishing. It, there's no normal either. By the way, they say normal Joe, but what what's normal, what is normal there now? is is that well, we've all got our de we've all got our demons, right? And um and that's what I'm realizing now. It's I'm at a stage of life now where I realize how well I'm extremely grateful for life. And I think that I've been I've been happy and content, but this gratefulness that I've got now, when I look back and I think, oh my God, I went through that to get here. And here I am, and I'm able to pass that on to my children. And I haven't done a bad job with children and grandchildren and family. It's where I now know that's where I've been most successful in the way in the way through my through my feelings about myself i've 
realize where the love comes from where where you have to inject energy to 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 get your worth you know because without them no me and i mean that without them no me without the music no me without without my friends without my really close friends no me no point yeah and let me, give, a, let me, give, let me give perspective and there is none of these without all these people there's none of no us. me no me no me no us yeah can't can't do it once without. again there's none of us without all these people that love what we do yeah, that's it so of course all the years of the 2000s you go through and you're hustling and bustling when do you think to put back the band as we would say the machine to fight back to say i'm taking what's mine again you know or in a nice way you know i guess the last the last year or two it, i've been on the right what what because the word is legacy now right so the last year or two you know what everyone knows what we went through in well i say the last year or two no i had a plan to um to do 20 years of ukg in 2020 and i had a venue all lined up and and i was putting the resources together and and the team together to help help do that yeah so we're going to do ukg 2020 a celebration of of of, of uk garage yeah and um you know we all know what happened then everything changed uh so that got postponed and what's going to happen and they um and, and i don't know who they are but the powers that be thought it best that they should send messages about 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 that thing and the messages caused families not to see each other and be fearful of seeing each other not see grandparents and not see and it, that wasn't me I'm, I'm not saying that was me but it affected some of my family and actually it affected me seeing some of my family and my road man just just wasn't having that i'm not having that <laughs> if, if it was a man or a thing i would have attacked it and wanted to kill it <laughs> without 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 a blink you know because because you're taking everything away from me that that i love you know and um and you're doing it and i got and, and and that so i was got into researching and got into communicating with others that were questioning it and we created um, I created a couple of couple of groups on some social things, and one of my pals, Alan, um, we spoke a lot. He's he's very he's a very powerful guy, very committed, and very when he puts his mind to something. And somehow, uh, a group called Together come out of it that we that we formed, and we became a voice for um, no lockdowns. We became a voice for 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 again against the passports we won some battles we believe we did with regards to mandates and and um we have members now and i'm extremely proud that i'm a founding member of that organization still helping run it behind the scenes alan's driving it in front of the scenes and we've got some really good professional committed people um here wait well still pushing against any of the any of the um I'm going to say bollocks straight up. Any of the bollocks. There you that, go, man. Straight yeah. up bull crap. Right Any there. of the bollocks that, they, that they're that they pushing on us these days as if it's true. We're challenging that now because we realise that actually we, we don't want autocratic states. We don't want technocratic states, draconian rules. We don't want to be told what to do unless something is really going on that's truthful. We recognise that, that, that some of these powers some of these people that have these powers need to be held to account and and we believe the best way to do that is to get people to join together metaphorically speaking but join together become a member but if not join together because voices together make people hear hear better you know i'll go in front of front of 100 geezers and they'll look at me and they'll laugh but let me bring my 100 and see what they do right you bring a gang of hundred and now 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 see how that's going to be taken yeah 
So the, so so out of things negative things, actually positive things came out of that. Are you able to help change and help push along the and, way? And and still and still aiming to grow that that there's 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 lots going on in the world that shouldn't be going on. It just shouldn't be. You how can you judge? I'm I'm growing as a as a young man thinking actually they class me as a bad young man. I'm I'm like I'm not good. It's like I'm not I'm 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 not my energy is not good and I'm not good for society um because of what they've told me I am and that's how I think of myself. And you've you've lied to all of us because and I say you've lied to all of us. I'm talking about the state has lied to all of us because anything that any of the baddest of us are, where that individually, what states perpetrate, <laughs> you can't measure that. What they perpetrate against the populations on the planet, you can't measure that. And I'm going to leave that to everyone's imagination. But a state will perpetrate murder, ugliness, will allow starvation, genocide, I don't know, all those things states perpetrate. That's not me. I don't want to kill people, innocent people for no, no reason. No, 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 no. You want to do this. I want to bring people together. I want to bring myself together. I want to That's make myself right. better. I want, to, I want to raise the vibration. I want to raise my vibration. I want to help people raise their vibrations. Um, and, and I think the state should want the same for all of us that same thing raise our vibrations make us make us be, be ruled by example you know not not the rest of it bring love bring love together like this absolutely you know absolutely. Bringing, bringing you know or everyone together and i get that because being isolated does not clinically help anyone well that um, we learned we've learned that the hard way haven't we I think what I'm saying is, is that me, myself, I'm now not judging myself against, against the, um, against the measures of the past that, that where I realizing actually that, that was because of my environment, my situation, why I made those hard choices. But if you've given me a, or given anyone, given them chance to have a good environment and good situation, that's going to make the world a better place no so why are we letting those environments exist even why are we why are we as a whole as a group allowing for those environments to exist we should be changing it yeah of course but you know what you know you know how hard it is one voice alone <laughs> can't do much no but what one one person can do and this is where you are this is where you you wear the wisdom of um of 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 the of the ones before we say you change the world by changing yourself right um, michael jackson tells you look at the man in the mirror yeah and 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 you just look for the wisdoms that you know to be true and and actually reject the bollocks that isn't i think a lot of us have learned that lesson and like i said again during that period of time gave everyone that moment of the pause to look at themselves in the mirror and really ask those important questions. What yeah. is really going on? Yeah. Marvin so Gaye says it, what's going on? You know, it, yeah. it, it doesn't hold in 1970, it holds in 2024, it'll probably be the same in 2074. And we're no longer here. It's what's so, going on. So you just named my, um, if I named a tune, it would be that tune. Someone, uh, one of my youngers um, asked me, um, just two nights ago he said like what tunes really move you and what what I think he said what three tunes and I said let me say this for a start a man like me can't name three tunes I can name one tune that stands a little bit above everything else and that, that would be tune what's has going, to, has that would be what's going on for the message in it it moves me like that but I couldn't do any more than that I could name you 150 tunes I could possibly get name you 200 to 300, and I would be upset that I never named you the other 200 if you know what I mean so <laughs> that's how much music is now I hear you Norris and on the end note as you've taken us on this journey and thank you for you know sharing with us the clinical sides of you as well and mm -hmm. activist sides we take off our hat to you where do you see yourself from now to infamy. 
legacy is the most is the is the thing is the word that I've got in my in my heart and my head and my purpose. So I'm going to look to build on the foundations that have been laid um, in all departments. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do what it is I preach to do, which is come together with as many like-minded, great energy people and find ways to enrich self first and all around self. And um, whilst doing that, um, learn to share, learn to actually care more. Um, but I'm at, you know what? I'm in a great space already. So for me, that's already happening. I just want it to happen more and more um and and that that's what i want for the world more more of that so so people what should... i want for myself i've that's... got that's what i'm trying to say what i yeah. want for my what, what i want for my me and my family i'm going to get what i want for the world i aspire to yeah i i, I have to leave it there everyone thank you so much for tuning mm -hmm. in one of our best selectors of the game has laid it from inception to infamy and god bless the journey that you are on because even the clinical part is so hard for people to speak about and that's been something as when we all grew up we didn't have help at all back then it was none of this they were like tough it out man Right, you know, blank, what I'm talking about. Blank, tough it out, like tough blank, it out. Blank, can blank canvases for us all. Like, work yeah, that out. work that shit out for yourself, bruv. Work it out, man. What do you think <laughs> you're the only? What do you think you're the only one dealing? And it's the truth. What do you think you're the only one dealing with? But yeah. now, thanks to awareness, vigilance, we can and people like yourself that have the wisdom of carrying that. To share it, you may have just helped someone stop themselves from doing something they should not be doing. And on that note, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to True House Stories, where we always get the real story. This man right here, God bless him on his journey. He's got more to give you as time goes on. Keep an eye on Norris, DeVos, Windross. Take care, everyone. Thank you again.